اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد أفضل أنبيائك وأكرم أسفيائك من فاضت من نوره جميع الأنوار وصاحب المعجزات وصاحب المقام المحمود سيد الأولين والآخرين الحمد لله We are discussing the blessed life of سيدنا نوح على نبينا وعليه الصلاة والسلام in today's session Sayyidina Nuh ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu wa salam is the son of Lamak who is the son of Mattu Shalakh who is the son of Khanukh and Khanukh is also known as Idris i.e. the prophet Idris alayhi salatu wa salam the son of Yard the son of Mahlail the son of Qainan, the son of Anush, the son of Sheath, the son of Sayyidina Adam ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu was salam. So between Sayyidina Nuh and Sayyidina Adam alayhi salatu was salam, there are ten generations. In relation to the birth of Sayyidina Nuh ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu was salam, it is mentioned by the scholars of Tariqh, that his birth was 126 years after the departure from this world of Sayyidina Adam ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu was salam. So it was 126 years after Sayyidina Adam ala, ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu was salam passed away. This is mentioned by Ibn Jarir Rahimahullah and other scholars as well. In terms of the Asharatu Qurun, the ten generations that are mentioned, this is mentioned in Sahih al Bukhari by Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. He says, Kana bayna Adam wa Nuhin Asharatu Qurun. Between Adam and Nuh, there were ten generations. Kulluhum ala al-Islam. All of them were Muslims. And this is the lineage, the pure lineage of Sayyidina Nuh ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu was salam. That every forefather in this lineage is a Muslim. In terms of the Qarn that is meant here, in terms of the Qurun that is meant here, the scholars have mentioned different interpretations. Some have said that the meaning of Qarn is 100 years. And if that's the case, then your maths will be better than mine. 10 multiplied by 100 is a thousand. So the amount of years between Sayyidina Adam and Sayyidina Nuh ala nabiyyina alayhi salatu wasalam, would be a thousand years. And but the more famous understanding of Qarn is what we call in Arabic Al-Jeel min nas meaning the generations, the lineages, the forefathers between Sayyidina Nuh and Sayyidina Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, are ten. And this can be understood from the blessed hadith of the Prophet sallallahu wasallam, in which he sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Khairul Quruni Qarni. The best of generations is my generation. The lives of the people before Sayyidina Nuh ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu was salam were very long. They lived for a long time. And based upon this, there would not just be a thousand years between Sayyidina Nuh and Sayyidina Adam alayhi salatu was salam, but rather there would be a huge gap of many thousand years. Sayyidina Nuh ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu was salam is known as the first messenger. It's mentioned in the books that فَكَانَ أَوَّلَ رَسُولٍ بُعِثَ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِ الْأَرْضِ He was the first Rasul sent to the people of the earth. Last week we had a discussion in relation to the 
the interpretation of Nabi and Rasul. Some scholars said Nabi and Rasul are the same, have the same meaning. And some differentiated between them. And one understanding of Rasul is that he is sent to a nation to guide them. And Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu was salam was sent to the nation who began to worship idols and at taghut and shaitan. And when they entered into this huge misguidance of kufr, he was sent and therefore he is known as Awwalu Rasul, the first messenger sent to the earth. The scholars have differed about how old Sayyidina Nuh ala Nabiina alayhi salatu was salam was when he was given the, when he was made the, given the duty to announce prophethood. Some say that he was 50 years old and some say that he alayhi salatu was salam was 350 years old and there's other statements mentioned as well in relation to this and that's why on the second page of our notes in terms of the second slide on our notes we have mentioned in there a statement that Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu was salam was commanded to announce his prophethood at the age of 40 years and this is mentioned in light of the Hashia, the commentary upon Jalalain which is known as a sawi right? So based upon that, the age of 40 is mentioned, but there are other statements in relation to this as well. In terms of Sayyidina Nuh ala Nabiina wa alayhi salatu was salam being sent to the earth to guide the people as a Rasul and the events that occurred in his blessed life the importance of them can be understood just by the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the life of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam and the events that occurred with his nation in various parts of the Holy Quran. In Surah Al-A'raf, in Surah Yunus, in Surah Hud, in Surah Al-Anbiya, in Surah Al-Mu'minun, in Surah Al-Shu'ara, in Surah Al-Ankabut, in Surah Al-Safat, in Surah Al-Qamar and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed an entire surah, Surah Al-Nuh on the life of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu was salam and in relation to the events that occurred in the blessed life of Sayyidina Nuh ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu was salam. So we mentioned that he alayhi salatu was salam was the first messenger sent to the earth. And what was it that he propagated? What was it that he taught? In terms of his being the first Rasul, just a point before we move on to what he taught and what he propagated. The people of the Mahshar, just like they will invoke Sayyidina Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, like we mentioned last week on the Day of Judgment, the people on the Day of Judgment will call out to Sayyidina Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, in a way that will reflect his blessed personality. In the same way, they will come to Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu was salam. And they will say, Ya Nuh, anta awwalu rusul ila ahli al-ard. O Nuh, you are the first messenger to the people of the earth. Wa sammaka Allahu abdan shakura. And Allah has given you the title that you are a grateful slave. That you are a chosen servant who thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah, in relation to this, we will be mentioning some further description of this aspect of the life of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. His shukr, his gratitude in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what we can take from that in our lives. But when they ask for him to intercede, he will mention that this is not for him. He is not to open the door of intercession on the Day of Judgment. And that hadith is very long. But eventually when they reach Sayyidina Rasulullah 
he sallallahu alayhi wa will say, Ana laha. I am for this. And he will open the door for intercession. So Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu was salam was sent to his nation to command them to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. To not worship the idols. To not worship the statues. And to understand that nobody is worthy of worship but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That there is no ilah, that there is no God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is no Rabb, there is no Lord but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu was salam commanded this and this chain of command continued after him amongst the messengers and all the messengers after him were from his lineage so the prophet who we are commemorating today whose life we are remembering today is the prophet alayhi salatu was salam who is the forefather of all the messengers that came after him that's why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the quran in surah as-safat وَجَعَلْنَا ذُرِّيَّتَهُ هُمُ الْبَاقِينَ And in the same way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about Sayyidina Nuh and Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam وَجَعَلْنَا فِي ذُرِّيَّتِهِمَ النُّبُوَّ وَالْكِتَابِ We made in their ذُرِّيَّة in their lineage we made prophethood and al-kitab the books, the holy books of Allah were sent to the descendants of Sayyidina Nuh ala Nabiina wa alayhi salatu was salam and Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. So Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu was salam said to his nation, Ya qawmi inni lakum nadhirun mubeen. O my nation, I am inni lakum nadhirun mubeen. I am an open warner to you. Ani'budullaha wa attaquhu wa ati'oon. That you worship Allah and that you fear him and that you obey him. يَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ مِنْ ذُنُوبِكُمْ He will forgive you your sins. وَيُؤَخِّرْكُمْ إِلَىٰ جَلِمْ مُسَمَّةً And he will give you a delay until a time that's fixed. إِنَّ أَجَرَ اللَّهِ إِذَا جَاءَ لَا يُؤَخَّرْ But when the time of Allah comes, it will not be delayed. لَوْ كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ If only you knew. He said, Oh my Lord, I called my nation in the night and the day. فَلَمْ يَزِدْهُمْ دُعَائِي إِلَّا فِرَارًا Whenever I called them, it did nothing but increase them in their firar, in their running away. وَإِنِّي كُلَّمَا دَعُوتُهُمْ لِتَغْفِرَ لَهُمْ Whenever I called them, so that you forgive them. جَعَلُوا أَصَابِعَهُمْ فِي أَذَانِهِمْ They placed their fingers in their ears. وَاسْتَغْشَوْ ثِيَابَهُمْ وَأَصَرُّوا وَاسْتَكْبَرُوا اسْتِكْبَارًا Right, they became arrogant in their ways. And he mentions the different ways in which he called them. That I called them in the openly and I called them hiddenly. And these ayat are translated for you in the, in the notes. So he mentioned that he called them with different types of calling. In the night he would call them, in the day he would call them. Openly he would call them, hiddenly he would call them. When they'd be alone he'd call them. When they're in a group he'd call them. Sometimes he would call them by warning them. Other times he would encourage them. But whenever he did that, they ignored his call and they continued on their path of misguidance. And they continued to worship idols. And then they became enemies, strong enemies to Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu was salam. And they would belittle him. And they belittle whoever believed in him. And they said, we will throw stones at you. We will throw you out of our area. And they said to him, inna la naraka fi dalalim mubeen. Indeed, we see you in open error. And he's, 
alayhi salatu wasalam responded to them and said, Qala ya qawmi laysa bi dalala. I am not on misguidance. Walakinni rasulun min rabbil alameen. But I am a messenger from the Lord of all universes, of all creation. So I'm not like you think that I'm lost, that I don't know where I'm going. But rather, I am on the siratul mustaqim. I am on the right path. And I am a Rasul from the Lord. Uballighukum risalati rabbi. I mentioned to you the messages from my Lord. Wa ansahu lakum. And I advise you. Wa a'lamu min Allahi ma la ta'lamun. And I know from Allah that which you do not know. Wa a'lamu min Allahi ma la ta'lamun. Right? I know from Allah what you do not know. And then they went on to say that they are not following Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. In the notes I've mentioned this as the reasons that they put forward for their disbelief. Right? Why did they disbelieve? What was their alleged justification? Right? We're, we're disbelieving for this reason. Right? They say, وَمَا نَرَاكَ إِلَّا بَشْرًا مِثْلَنَا we do not see you but as a human being like us. When we're studying the lives of the Prophets, والسلام, this aspect you will see in the previous nations. That their objections upon their Prophets was, وَمَا نَرَاكَ إِلَّا بَشْرًا مِثْلَنَا We do not see you but as a Bashar like us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ يُوحَى إِلَيَّ أَنَّمَا إِلَهُكُمْ إِلَهُ وَاحِدٌ فَاسْتَقِيمُوا إِلَيْهِ وَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ وَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ Say that I am a human being like you. Allah has sent down the prophets as human beings. Because Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا مَنَعَ النَّاسَ أَنْ يُؤْمِنُوا إِذْ جَاءَهُمُ الْهُدَى What stopped the people from believing? When guidance came to them, إِلَّا أَنْ قَالُوا أَبْعَثَ اللَّهُ بَشْرًا رَسُولًا Except that they say, Allah sent a messenger as a human being. قُلْ لَوْ كَانَ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَلَائِكَةٌ يَمْشُونَ مُطْمَئِنِّينَ لَنَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْهِ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَلَكَ الرَّسُولًا If it was possible for the angels to roam this earth peacefully, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have sent his messengers in the form of angels. But how would we learn from their lives? How would we learn from their examples if they were sent in angelic form? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the rusul as human beings. But before this ummah could say, before the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam could say, Ma anta illa bashrun mithluna. The Quran answered, Qul, say, O oh beloved, I am only a human being like you upon whom wahi has come. That is none worthy of worship. That wahi made the prophets different to all other human beings. It's like saying that the leader of a nation is just like his community. It's just like the average people in his community. But he has leadership. A teacher is the same as his student. The teacher says, I'm a human being like you. The parent says to his son, I'm a human being like you. Does that mean that in respect and honor they are the same? And in the same way, the prophets, alayhi salatu wasalam, were sent in human form, but like we, like we discussed last week, that the prophets are bashar, but they are khayrul bashar. They are best of all bashar. So their objection upon Sayyidina Nuh mithlana. We do not view you except as a human being like us. We do not see those who follow you except those who are disgraced. Who are the lowest amongst us in, in, in respect and honor and in status in society. The lower class of society are following you. We can't be with them. They have followed you 
just upon what they have seen. From the outskirts, they have not looked into it in detail. So in, in relation to Badi al Ra'i, the Mufassirin have said, Ay bi mujarradi ma da'utahum istajabu laka min ghayri nazar wala ru'ya. They have entered, they have accepted your call without looking into it, without thinking about it. And they saw this as a negative. They saw this as a negative that these people have accepted Nu ala Nabiina wa alayhi salatu wasalam's call just based upon his call without looking into it further. And yet this was something that was a sign of the strongest of believers. That they had no hesitation in their hearts to accept. And this is why our master, Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, said when he was praising Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala an, he said, مَا دَعُوتُ أَحَدًا إِلَى الْإِسْلَامِ إِلَّا كَانَتْ لَهُ كَبْوَى I did not call anyone to Islam, but that they had hesitation when being called towards, and they had stumbling when being called towards Islam. Right, مَا دَعُوتُ أَحَدًا إِلَى الْإِسْلَامِ إِلَّا كَانَتْ لَهُ كَبْوَى غَيْرَ أَبُوِي بَكَرْ Except for Abu Bakr. فَإِنَّهُ لَمْ يَتَلَعْثَمْ Because Abu Bakr did not hesitate. He had no hesitation in his heart. So this was actually a virtue of them. That their hearts were so pure that they understood the wahdaniyyah, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they understood the truthfulness of Allah's messenger without having to think about it further, without having to hesitate, without having to worry before they accepted Islam. Unlike those who cast themselves to be intellectuals, but they worried about the effects that would occur. They worried about what would happen to them if they entered into Islam. And one of those worries was, what will happen if we join this lower class society? What happens if we join these people who are poor, who are in difficulty? And we leave those of higher class in society who have power and who have strength. And this was always the sign of the followers of the Rusul. As Hirakal said in a narration which is mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari that when Hirakal asked Hercules, when he asked Abu Sufyan radiallahu ta'ala an, who at that time was not a Muslim, when he asked him about the signs of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he asked him certain things about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and included in that question was, who follows him? Are the strongest of society following him or the weakest in society? Because the one who has the strongest of society behind him is it's often understood that this power is behind his back that is pushing him forward. And Abu Sufyan said, Bal The weakest in society are following him. And the answer of Hirakal that is mentioned in the narrations is that Wahum Atba'u Rusul. These weakest people, they are those who follow the messengers. That is a sign of the messengers. And when we look back to the life of Sayyidina Nuh wasalam, this was the case. But one of the answers that they gave for rejecting Iman was that they could not be seen with those people who they saw as lower than themselves. And one thing that we should take from that in our lives is that we should not see anybody to be lower than us simply because of their race, simply because of the classes that we've created in our communities. Because the Quran says, Inna akramakum indallahi atqakum. The most virtuous of you in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is most fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu was salam, one aspect of the way in which he called them is the way of love that he had for them, affection that he had for them. Because what we often, miscon uh, the misconception that often arises is that Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu was salam, the nation was destroyed. Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu was salam did dua for his nation to be destroyed. 
So the misconception that arises is that did he have any ra'fa? Did he have any compassion for his nation? Did he have any love for his nation? Or was it that Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, when he saw this reaction of the nation, he, he did dua and said, may they just be destroyed. He alayhi salatu wasalam, called them with talattuf, with love, with kindness, with generosity. He said, Qala ya qawmi ara'aytum in kuntu ala bayinatim min rabbi. O oh my nation, if you see that I am upon a clear proof from my Lord, and He granted me mercy from His court, and you are blind to this. Will we force you whilst you dislike? He said, I'm not forcing you to enter into Islam, but I am showing you that this is a clear proof, and this is the right way. And this is the way of the prophets. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Harun alayhi wa salatu wa and inshallah we'll discuss that in detail when we get there to that topic. فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلَ اللَّيِّنَ لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرُ وَيَخْشَى Speak to Fir'aun in a soft tone that he may take advice and fear. The Quran says, Udu ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal mawaidatil hasana. Call to the way of your Lord with wisdom and the best of advice. So he, he, he mentioned different ways of calling his ummah to the way of Islam. And he even mentioned to them, La as'alukum alayhi mala. I do not want wealth from you. If you think I'm calling you, it's because of wealth. That's not the case. In ajriya illa ala Allah. My reward is only with Allah. Right? So I don't want a wage for what I'm doing. And the benefit that I'm giving you is not for worldly benefits, but rather is to benefit you. And then he answered to them, وَمَا أَنَا بِطَارِدِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا I will not leave, I will not forsake those who believe. إِنَّهُمْ مُلَاقُوا رَبِّهِمْ Indeed, they will meet their Lord. وَلَكِنِّي أَرَاكُمْ قَوْمًا تَجْهَلُونَ but I see you as a nation who are ignorant. So after so many years of calling them, and this is where that misconception can easily go, where the Quran mentions, it, mentions how long Sayyidina Nuh wasalam, spent amongst his nation. His discussion with the nation, it wasn't just two days. It wasn't just one day. Right? And without taking too much time, without going too much off the topic. But when seeking advice from our teachers, we find this as well. Our shiuch, we find this as well. That sometimes we find certain errors being carried out and we seek their advice. Should we leave aside this, this particular aspect of the community who just won't listen to us? Who are carrying on with what we disagree with? What we find is contradicting the way of our akabir, of our elders of Islam. And they often state that the way of da'wah is not to leave people. The way of calling people is not to just say, to give up on them. But rather you have to continue trying. You have to continue knocking at, them, at their doors until eventually their eyes, eyes and their hearts open up to the reality. How long did Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, teach his nation Advise his nation, have discussions with his nation. And just to keep you all awake, the Quran's wording exactly is He stayed amongst them for 1,000 years, take away 50. So you work it out how many years? Right, with my weak maths, that's 950. Right, you can correct me if I'm wrong. فَلَبِثَ فِيهِمْ أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ إِلَّا خَمْسِينَ عَامًا He stayed amongst them for a thousand years, except 50. 
So 950 years were spent in da'wah at the beginning of this of the notes and inshallah at the end of our discussion so sometimes that's how our classes work we write something at the beginning and discuss it at the end right but um, so at the beginning of the notes and inshallah at the end of our discussion I will be mentioning the age of Sayyidina Nuh and there's so many differences of opinion about this but the age was not 950 950 years was the time spent advising the nation how long is 950 years? Right? How long have we lived here? And sometimes it feels a long, long time. Right? And for some of us, it feels a very short amount of time. And now that the Day of Judgment is coming close, the days are going fast. The years are going fast. But فَلَبِثَ فِيهِمْ أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ إِلَّا خَمْسِينَ عَامًا So even though so many years had passed, only a few of them had accepted. And the worst part of this nation was, this is, now we're discussing the aspect that led to their destruction. وَكَانَ كُلَّ مَنْ قَرَدَ جِيلٌ Whenever one generation would finish, so the first generation would be reaching its last moments. وَصَّوْ مَنْ بَعْدَهُمْ بِعَدَمِ الْإِيمَانِ بِهِ They would advise the next generation, don't believe in Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. And not only that, it's not just don't believe in him. They would say, وَمُحَارَبَتِهِ They'd mention to fight Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. وَمُخَالَفَتِهِ And go against Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. وَكَانَ الْوَالِدُ إِذَا بَلَغَ وَلَدُهُ And when a child would become adult, وَعَقَلَ عَنْهُ كَلَامَهُ And when the child would begin to understand his discussions, وَالسَّاهُ فِي مَا بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهُ and the private discussions that they would have would be Allah yu'mina bi Nuh abadan ma'ash so long as he lives he is not to believe in Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam wa da'iman ma baqi so long as he remains he is not to believe in Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam right so this was the kind of ideology that was being passed on they were adamant upon their kufr they were adamant upon their disbelief and whoever came after them they were advising them to stay upon that disbelief. وَكَانَتْ سَجَايَاهُمْ And their nature, their characteristic became to reject Iman and to reject the truth. And that's why the Quran says, the Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, he mentioned, وَلَا يَلِدُوا إِلَّا فَاجِرًا كَفَّارًا They do not give birth to, the next generation who is born are only fajir and kuffar. They are only disobedient and kuffar. And Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam realized that they would not come on the right path. And he saw that there's no good in them. And they went as far as causing him harm and rejecting him in everything that he did and said. That's when he did dua. And that's why there's a title within the uh, notes which mentions first and foremost the way in which they, they the ignorance of this nation the way in which they dealt with Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam and then the way in which they they attacked him right Ibn Asakir mentions the narration that they severely wounded Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam right to the extent that they thought that Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam had passed away they put him in a woolen cloth and threw him away, threw him aside, ma'adullah. And however, Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam came back. And in that state, again, he began to invite them to the truth. So he never gave up on calling his nation. And at that time, when Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam was facing this, one of the titles within the notes is Who did Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam turn to? Who did he turn to? And who should we turn to at our times of difficulties? Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam turned to his Lord, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he said, Qala Rabbin surni bima kathaboon. Oh my Lord, help me, for they have denied me. 
And he said, مِمَّا خَطِيئَاتِهِمْ أُغْرِقُوا فَأُدْخِلُوا نَارَا فَلَمْ يَجِدُوا لَهُمْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْصَارَا Because of their sins, they were drowned. And they entered into the fire of hell. And they did not find any support for themselves against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because those who are against the messengers of Allah, they have no malja, they have no place of refuge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wrath. So Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he mentioned, Rabbi la tadar ala al ardi min al kafirina dayyara. O Allah, do not leave on the earth any disbeliever. Inna ka in tadarhum yudillu ibadak. If you leave these people, they will misguide your ibad. Wala yalidu illa fajiran kafara. So the, re- the reason behind this dua is mentioned within the notes as well. In light of a tafsir al kabir by Imam Fakhruddin al Razi, rahimahullah, that he mentions, Imam Fakhruddin al Razi, rahimahullah, mentions in a tafsir al kabir that Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam said to Allah Rabbin Surni, O Allah, help me for, the sake, for your sake and the sake of your religion. Because Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam did not do this because of the harm that they caused to him. But rather it was the harm that they were causing to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The opposition that they were carrying out towards the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam to build the ship on which the believers would be saved. But during this period of building the ship, they would make fun out of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, saying, what, what are you building? And why are you building this when there's no water around? And in relation to their ignorance, before I move on in relation to the ship, how bad is, is the ignorance of this nation against whom this dua was made of destruction? That even on the day of judgment, they will not give up on the ignorance. On the day of judgment, it's mentioned by Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah in a narration of Sayyidina Abu Sa'id al-Khudri that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, on the day of judgment, Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam will come along with his nation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Hal ballaghta? Did you propagate? Did you convey the message of the deen to your ummah? And Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam will say yes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to the ummah, Hal ballaghakum? Did he convey the message to you? And they will say, no. Ma'ad Allah. They will say, la ma ja'ana min nabiyyin. They will say, no, no prophet came to us. So the ignorance is to the extent that even after this adab that has come upon them, this punishment that came upon them, on the day of judgment, they will still deny that any prophet came to them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, may yashhadu lak. Who will testify for you? فَيَقُولُ Muhammad wa ummatuh. He will say Prophet Muhammad and his ummah will testify. So if we spend our entire lives in the sajda of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to thank him for creating us amongst the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which was not in our choice, it was not in our ikhtiyar, it was not in our capacity that we decided this. But rather it is the great mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. That we are from this ummah who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطَىٰ We made you a moderate ummah لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطَىٰ وَسَطَىٰ لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ So that you become 
witnesses upon the people. وَيَكُونُ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا وَيَكُونُ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا And that the Messenger, Rasulullah وسلم, be a witness over you. We could expand this discussion further in relation to this part. But we move ahead in relation to the building of the ship. Some of the ulama have mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam to dig a tree so that the wood that would be from that tree would be used to build the ship. So he, he dug the tree and waited for a hundred years. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam to carve that tree. Uh, carved the ship and he carved it, the wood for 100 years some say 40 years right so in, in, in the notes it may well say the different years to what I'm mentioning because of the fact that different narrations have mentioned different times and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best in the same way in relation to how tall this ship was there's different narrations some said 80 arm lengths was the length and its width was 50. And that also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam to paint this ship with tar, right, inwardly and outwardly. And to make it in a bow shape. And in such a way that it's curved, so that when it's going through the water, it easily maneuvers through the water. So this was the, def the description of this ship, which is mentioned in more detail within the notes with reference to At-Tafsir al-Kabir. In relation to how many people were on board on this ship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا آمَنَ مَعَهُ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ And did not believe in him except a few. After so many years of calling them, only a few of them entered into Islam. So hence there's a difference of opinion. But the famous narration of Ibn Abbas is that كَانُوا ثَمَانِينَ نَفْسًا there were 80 people along with their wives. But there's other narrations, such as the narration of Ka'b al-Ahbar of 72. And some even said 10. And some said it was only Sayyidina Nuh and his three sons. And it is mentioned in relation to the wife of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. She is the mother of all of his children. And his children were Yam, Ham, Sam, Yafith and Yam. And this Yam is also known as Kan'an. This Kan'an was a disbeliever who drowned. And there was a son called Abir who passed away before the storm. In relation to this wife is mentioned that in the Quran, and in light of the Quran is mentioned that she drowned. And she was from those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Illa man sabaka alayhi al That we will save your family except for those in relation to whom the decree has come. So when they, when the storm started, it started with what the Quran says, فَإِذَا جَاءَ أَمْرُنَا So when our command came, وَفَارَتْ tanur And the oven, tanur literally means oven, and the oven overflows. فَاسْلُكْ فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّنْ زَوْجَيْنِ اثْنَيْنِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam that when this oven begins to overflow, then you embark upon the ship. Embark means to ride upon the ship. مِنْ كُلِّنْ زَوْجَيْنِ اثنين In two of every couple. وَأَهْلَكَ And your family إِلَّا مَنْ سَبَقَ عَلَيْهِ الْقَوْلُ مِنْهُمْ 
except for those upon whom the word has decreed. Right? Except for those who, in relation to whom the decision has been made. The decree has been made that they will be punished as well. So Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu was salam, he rode upon this ship and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu was salam a beautiful way to start and end this journey. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught him a dua and that dua is mentioned in the Holy Quran. He, Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu was salam said to all of his the people coming onto this ship as well. Bismillahi majreha wa mursaha inna rabbi la ghafoorur rahim. Right, in the name of Allah, upon the name of Allah is majreha, its movement, wa mursaha, and its stopping. Right, so we, we move with the name of Allah and we stop with the name of Allah. And this is the dua to recite when traveling on a ship. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught this dua to all the prophets. Our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Quran is mentioned, قُلْ رَبِّ أَدْخِلْنِي مُدْخَلَ صِدْقٍ وَجَعَلْنِي مِلْ وَأَخْرِجْنِي مُخْرَجَ صِدْقٍ O oh Allah, admit me with the truth and take me out with the truth. So this ship they rode upon it and the storm began and the storm destroyed all those apart from those who were on the ship in terms of this nation how far had it gone how many people were destroyed what was destroyed imam malik rahimahullah has mentioned that the people of the time of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu was salam qad mala'u sahla wal jabal they had fulfilled all the level areas and the high ground they had fulfilled all of these and it is mentioned by Abdul Rahman bin Zayd bin Aslam that lam takum buk'atun fil ard illa walaha malik wa ha'iz there was not a single land on the earth Except that it had an owner. Every single area of the land was owned. That's how far it had gone, this nation. And all of it was destroyed. Only those survived who were on the ship. So they denied him and we saved him and whoever was on the ship. And we made these the khala'if. We made these the caliphs. These were the only remaining, remaining people left. And we drowned those who denied our ayat. In terms of the son of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu was salam. And the wife of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu was salam. It's mentioned that Sayyidina Nuh ala nabina alayhi salatu was salam called his son. Right? It's mentioned in the verse of the Quran. And whilst discussing this, there's an important reason why we're discussing this. And that is to understand. And there's a, there's a title within the notes as well in relation to this. That the status of lineage cannot take over and have precedence, have more importance than the status of the deen. Then the status of Iman. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed it in such a way that this lesson be for those who say because we are the sons of the pious, because we are the wives of the pious, therefore we will be saved. Allah says in the Quran, Daraballahu mathalan kafarum ra'ata nuhi wa ra'ata lut. For those who disbelieve, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them an example of the wife of Nuh and Lut. Even though Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam and Lut alayhi salatu wasalam, 
were the prophets of Allah. They were close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But their wives were in kufr and they were destroyed. Their connection to the prophets could only be saved if there is iman. And if there's no iman, that connection cannot be saved. And in the same way in relation to the son, Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam wa nada Nuhun ibnahu. Nuh called out to his son, wa kana fi ma'azil. This son was away, standing apart. Ya bunay, O oh my son, irkam ma'ana, wa la takum ma'al kafirin. Ride with us. Do not be with the kuffar. Do not be with the disbelievers. Qala sa'awi ila jabal. Ya'asimunu min al ma'a. That I will take refuge in a mountain and it will save me from the, wa- from the water. قَالَ لَا عَاصِمَ الْيَوْمَ مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا مَا الرَّحِيمِ There is no Asim, there is no protector today from the command of Allah except who He has mercy upon. وَحَالَ بَيْنَهُمُ الْمَوْجِ And then the wave came in between them. فَكَانَ مِنَ الْمُغْرَقِينَ And the Quran mentions إِنَّهُ لَيْسَ مِنْ أَهْلِكَ إِنَّهُ عَمَلٌ غَيْرُ صَالِحِ he is not from your family. He is your son, but he is not from your family. Because his actions are not salih. And further details in relation to that are given. And because the lives of the prophets are an example to us, that's why these situations occurred. But further details you can find within the notes in relation to the wife. Of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam being a disbeliever and how that could not have any effect upon his greatness. In terms of the end of the storm and when it reached end and how long was spent in this ship and how long the storm lasted for. Qatada and others have mentioned that the Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam and the believers rode upon the ship on the 10th of Rajab and they carried on for 150 years until it arrived at the Mount Judi and it stayed there for a month and they came out on the day of Ashura on the 10th of Muharram and Ibn Jarir has mentioned a similar narration that agrees with this, that this was the amount of time that was spent upon the ship. So in relation to Ashura and the 10th of Muharram and the fasting on that day, I believe I mentioned something in the notes as well. So because of time limits, I will not go into that further. But Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam fasted on that day. And before we conclude, I'd like to mention that aspect of his blessed life. The Quran mentions, إِنَّهُ كَانَ عَبْدًا shakura. He was a grateful servant. It's mentioned that he used to thank Allah, praise Allah upon his food, upon his clothes, upon his drink, and about all matters. Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah, narrates in his musnad that the Prophet sallallahu said inna allah la yarda anil abd indeed Allah is pleased with the servant and ya'kul al akla that he eats food fayahmaduhu alayha and he prays him upon it aw yashrabu al sharba or he drinks fayahmaduhu alayha and he does hamd upon that if we ask the people who are attending here today the young and the old after we finished eating today, did we remember to even say hamd? Did we say alhamdulillah after eating? This is not a question for us to sh- nod our heads for or shake our heads for. It's our hearts that need to shake. Sometimes we forget the even the most simplest of actions that we deem simple. But yet they are great in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And this was a one of the aspects of the life of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. That he did the hamd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In terms of how long he fasted, his abdan shakura, how long did he fast? Is mentioned in Ibn, Sunan ibn Majah 
that the Prophet وسلم, said, Sama Nuhun Ad-Dahra. Say that Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam would always fast. Illa yawm al-fitri wa yawm al-adha. Except for the day of Eid al-Fitr and the day of Eid al-Adha. Except for the first of Shawwal and the tenth of Dhul Hijjah. Apart from that, he would always fast. And inshallah, you will learn this in your studies about what days we are forbidden from fasting, even the Nawafil fasts, even the fasts that are voluntary, right? The five days in which we should not fast. He also performed Hajj, is mentioned in the narration, such as of Hafid Abu Ya'la, that the Prophet وسلم, passed by Wadi Asfan, Usfan. And he mentioned that Sayyidina Nuh and Hud and Ibrahim والسلام, had passed by this area. So Alhamdulillah, we now conclude. And inshallah, we finish on time or as close as possible to time today. Now Sayyidina Nuh والسلام, when it came time to leave this world, to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and enjoy life that is stronger than this worldly life. He said to his son and he advised them that I advise you of two things. Amuruka bila ilaha illallah. I command you to, to believe firmly that none is worthy of worship but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fa inna samawati sab'a wal ardina sab'a law wudi'at fi kaffatin fi kiffatin. If this seven skies and the seven earths were to be placed in one palm and la ilaha illallah was placed in the other la ilaha illallah would be more powerful than everything else on this earth and if the skies and the earths were round with a circle, La ilaha illallah would break that circle. And he said, Wa subhanallah wa bihamdi. And I also advise you, along with saying La ilaha illallah continuously, to say Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Because this is the prayer of every single thing. And through Subhanallah wa bihamdi, the khalq, the creation, is given risk. And then he said, I forbid you. From two things, I forbid you from shirk, from polytheism, from worshipping anyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I prohibit you from kibir, from arrogance. We discussed arrogance last week as well. What is arrogance? Arrogance is, is definition that you see yourself to be better than anybody else in any way or form, even if it's in the slightest form. That I'm better than the other person, then that is kibir. And there are warnings in relation to kibir and arrogance within the ahadith that are severe. And therefore, this is something that we need to get out of our hearts. The shaitan puts it in, but we need to find defense mechanisms to fight against that. And in terms of the lifespan of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, is mentioned that there are varying opinions. Yeah, the Quran mentions that he said amongst them for a thousand years take away fifty. Right? But in terms of the age of Sayyidina Nu alayhi salatu wasalam, how much is it? There's no definitive amount that you can find within the teachings. But the scholars have mentioned, for example, in Asawi, it is mentioned that his lifespan was 1,240 years. Right? But we don't take that as definitive. We don't say that that's the exact amount, definitely, because it can differ. And in terms of after the Tufan, after the storm, how long did Sayyidina Nuh salam stay? So some have said that he stayed on the earth. For 1,000, 
780 years. And that would then... Um, sorry, he stayed on the earth for 1,780 years. That was his full lifespan. And that he stayed 350 years after the Tufan. So 350 years after the storm. And that his full lifespan is that. But in the notes, we've given it to you in light of what is mentioned in As-Sawi. Where is the Qabr of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam? The ulama have mentioned, so that Ibn Jarir, that the famous narration is that the Qabr, that the grave of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam is in Masjid al-Haram. Many Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam are buried in Masjid al-Haram. For example, where we do Tawaf, the Mataf area. In that area, there's narrations about the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam being buried there. And Ibn Kathir, in Al-Bidayah wa Nihaya, he stated that the strongest position in relation to his blessed Qabr is that it is in Masjid Al-Haram. In terms of where is Mount Al-Judi, there are different differences, there are different statements by the scholars, you know, where the ship stopped, and where did this nation live before and after? There's so much difference of opinion. Some people say it's Iraq, right? And where the ship stopped in Mount Judi, this is a place called Mosul in Iraq and O in Sham and Jazeera is mentioned. For, for example, Algeria or Turkey and these areas are mentioned within the books as well. So again, these are those aspects in which there cannot be any definite um, sort of thing that we could say that this is definitely where this occurred. And this is part and parcel of history. And these are things that are, because history has so many qila wa qal, right? And the main thing is that that does, is not the main purpose behind learning the lives of the prophets anyway. The main purpose is to take lessons from their lives. To take lessons from what they, the perseverance that they had, the istiqamah that they had. And if anything we took from this gathering, the main thing that is important for us to take away is that we don't assume that Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam just gave up on his nation. Right? That he left his nation and, and asked for its destruction. But rather, he spent years upon years calling them. And it's mentioned in the Quran itself, all the different forms of da'wah that he carried out. And when it became clear to him, and this is mentioned in the notes as well, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala announced to the Prophet Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam that none of them were uhiya ila nuhin annahu lay yu'mina min qawmika illa man qad aman. Nobody will believe except for those who have already believed. So when he knew that none of these are going to believe now, the only thing that they will cause is destruction and fasad and uh, strife. That's when he prayed for their destruction. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me for any errors. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the blessings of the lives of the Anbiya alayhi wa salatu wa salam, and grant us the ability to act upon what we learn from their blessed examples. Ameen bijahin nabi al kareem alayhi afdalu salatu wa akwalu taslim aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات